Welcome back to Marbella Now. My name is Nicole King. Hey, hey, it's a brand new day. The first time I heard the name of my first guest was on social media because suddenly this Moose Moon started liking everything I was doing. And I thought to myself, that's an interesting name. And then at one of the breakfast meetings of Business First, Sam Campbell's networking group, I met this lovely, charming lady named Virginia. And guess what? She's Moose Moon and she's with us today on the programme. Virginia, welcome. It's so nice to actually have a chance to really chat. Thanks so much, Nicole. It's a pleasure coming to your programme and meeting you in person. You're a very um, cheerful person. And I have to say that the name struck me. Moose Moon, it's interesting, and then suddenly you were there, and very nice to then actually meet in person. You have a very, I don't want to say a healing aura, but it's a very calmness about you. So I'm sure that a lot of what you do has to do with your just natural state of being, or is this a learnt way of being that you've acquired over the years? Yeah, it's a learnt uh, a way that I, 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 I had to learning life what uh, I wanted to transform because uh, my nature is very active and very and my mind was very like monkey mind so I had to learn that and then I had to explore the other side that is the calm that I had it but it was uh, hidden. <laughs> Where are you from? Where did you grow up? I'm from northern Spain. I grew up uh, well I was born by the Mediterranean Sea uh, in a place that is uh, warm as Costa del Sol in Cartagena. But I was, uh, my, my parents uh, went to live to Valladolid, that is Castilla Leon capital. It's a cold, nice city, but very cold. So I, I was raised there. And then what brought you to Marbella? How was your travels that you've ended up here with so many of us that just come and get <laughs> enchanted by the city and stay? Um, uh, well, I, I, I visited uh, Costa del Sol for holidays during uh, three years because uh, with my sister and, and um, I think that maybe like 15 years coming here to explore the Costa del Sol, but not uh, Stepona area is where, where I live. It's beautiful, isn't it? And so different. Each area along the coast yeah. has its own particular charm. Definitely. So I, I came to live here after living in Latin America because I was uh, chasing the sun. So once I decided to come back to Spain, I, I decided to come to Costa del Sol. And this is where you're now launching Moon, Moose Moon? Or is this something that you've been doing for a while and you're just sharing it with us now? Uh, well... Under Moose Moon Brown, it was uh, born here in Costa del Sol. And what does it mean? <laughs> what's a moose? I know what a moon is, but what's a moose? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a long story that I will try to make it short. Um, Moose Moon, mm, it's about, because my, my, my business is about um, self-growth, about... Uh, uh, optimizing our um, um, physical and mental health, that's mainly. Um, I wanted to um, remark the yin side of myself. And moon has to do with the yin energy, with the feminine energy, with the nurturing, caring energy. And as in my past professional life, I was more young. I started as a lawyer, and that was like very different, analytical, and very rational. I wanted to give that sense of uh, femininity. I think it must, one would think, it must enhance what you do now, the fact that you've worked in that strict, organized, controlled, legal atmosphere to then catch where most of us make the mistakes in life that we miss out on so much because we're caught up 
in the urgency and the importance of things that really are not that urgent and not that important, as we all saw during the lockdown. Suddenly, everything just yeah. stopped. And we all began, I think, to prioritize in a different way of what matters to us most. What matters to you most? Um, to me, um, living a serene life. I like yeah. that. Yeah, it was, it was something that, um, it may sound weird, but it's something that I longed uh, since I was a kid. Maybe because I was very active and very, and I wanted to achieve that serenity that gives you the peace to enjoy life even in hard times. Exactly, it's just the attitude that we put towards it, but very difficult unless we are consciously aware of self-control, which is, I'm sure, where your teachings, if I can call them that, come into play, is helping people learn where they're missing out, how we are falling out. Even, I imagine, with self-talk, we're very detrimental when we, oh, I'm so stupid, or I can't do this, and so it must be a, a lot of different aspects. Which ones do you focus on when you're helping people in your sessions? Um, well, I work both, both with individuals and companies. So depending on what they want, I, I uh, maybe if with individuals, maybe they are in the self-knowledge path. So uh, we may use um, mindfulness session to be aware about our thoughts about our, our emotions, because if we manage them, we will be able to live a, a more a calmer life. Um, and with companies to advise or um, uh, to create a healthy work environments where people can work um, in a productive, um, efficient uh, environment. So to create uh, teams, and, and that's, uh, that has to do a lot with self-knowledge because if you don't know yourself, you, how can to integrate uh, a team? I think for a lot of people it's very difficult to self-analyze and to be aware because of the daily commitments, obligations. So I think the first step must be catching oneself and thinking, oh, maybe I could ask for help which I think in itself is difficult for people to do, to realize that they need help. What little things could you tell our viewers that are signals, little red flags that we like, oh, I do this, oh, I think that, oh, okay, maybe it would be okay to speak to someone, because I don't think we think there is help out there. This only happens to me, no one will understand, it's that kind of aspect. Mm, well, um, I think that we are, may notice when we, we are living a, um, a stressful life, when we don't have the, the peace to enjoy our family, our work. Uh, and the, so when we feel that um, our mind is, has a lot of noise, that's one of the first signs, a lot of noise, a lot of noise. And you don't find the peace, even if you are at the beach and you, you want to do something, you want to, uh, you do want activity. Mm -hmm. You are not able, able to enjoy doing nothing. Are there ways of controlling that, of being in that moment of anxiety, realizing it and then having tricks to address it, or do you just have to wait for it to just fade away? Um, well, some tricks are, for example, when you have a very repetitive thought and, and you are stuck in that thought. Imagine that it's like a cloud that passes away, but you have to imagine, not let it get in stuck. So the moment you, you start to overthink this and this, okay, blow and let it go. So it's one of the tricks. There are many because, you know, mindfulness has ha, have a lot of uh, practices and tricks to, to, to do in a, on a daily basis. So it's one of the tricks. I feel that you're kind of spiritual as well, not necessarily religious, but I feel that you have a spirituality around you, not something necessarily that you can share with all your 
clients, but I imagine that, I don't know, I feel like you do Reiki and that you do, I don't know, what, what kind of things do you delve into? Give us an idea who Virginia is, the scope of the things that you, that you find interesting. Um, yes, as you said, spirituality is not about religion. Of course, that you can practice, you can um, develop your spirituality through a religion, but it's very respectful, uh, but it's not necessary. Um, I think uh, spirituality, because it comes from spirit, and spirit, it's about inspiration. So what it inspires, inspires you in your life, uh, what is connected with your true being, with your essence, and so there are many, many ways to, to uh, delve into spirituality. One could be meditation. The other one could be uh, creativity. When we create, we are connected with our two reasons. What are you creating that is born from you? So creativity is another way to, uh, for spirituality. And I would say that those two are the ones that I, I practice. Well, those are beautiful practices. I have to say that the same thing, when you feel inspired and creative, everything just seems to flow. And even at work, I say that I used to work hard, but now I work happy. And it just seems to have much mm -hmm. better results. You're getting on a different vibe and everything seems to just vibe in harmony with that. If people would like to have a session with you, do you, have a, do you go to a clinic? Do you go to people's homes? What's the format? Yeah, it depends on, on the client. I uh, can go to people's home, uh, to, to the workplace. Um, and also I collaborate with some centers, physiotherapy center, and uh, where uh, I have different sessions in different places. So it depends. And it depends, of course, on the, the kind of uh, um, session, because sometimes I do mindfulness and Qigong. That's What's that? Qigong is, uh, uh, the, the translation is the art of the energy, or working the energy of your being in both uh, I mean, in three like levels, body, mind, and spirit, because we are you know, a whole being in those three realms. So you work basically uh, with movement, breathing, and intention. So it helps you to be in shape, healthy, but also your mind focus, because while you are practicing the movements and you are breathing, uh, you are focused on that intention, so your mind is, is like a meditation with movement. So I can do that also on the beach, that's a, a perfect, perfect place. place. A yeah. perfect place. When we have per per perfect places here to, to practice. Wonderful. So if anybody feels that they would like, because I feel that it's like just having a nice chat, no a session would be coming and chatting with you and just getting things off one's mind and then having the experience and the peaceful mindfulness of Virginia Moose Moon to, I suppose, guide through the different steps of just how to be more aware. No, I suppose that is the objective, how to be aware, to control our, our being, our emotions, our reactions. Sure, sure. And also, there are different techniques because uh, I'm specialized on, on Chinese metaphysics and there are different techniques uh, for self-knowledge. Self One of them is astrology. And through astrology, you can get to know more about your potential, your personality, your strengths, your weakness. So it's a way also to be aware of why my mind works like this, this why I have the tendency to be pessimistic, why. So it's a very useful uh, tool. It's amazing and how many people don't respect astrology as such and yet it's in every newspaper magazine everyone runs to read their horoscope so you really do feel that there is a lot of influence in our birth i suppose um moment of birth sure sure okay. yeah yeah unfortunately astrology has been um taken not seriously but uh let me tell you that even a scientist from this 20th century, as David Bone, who is one of the quantum physics fathers, he uh, developed different theories uh, to explain that um, through mathematics integrals, that 90% uh, of the people, uh, their lives can be 
predicted step by step through mathematical patterns because we are energy and you can calculate that it's true so we're in the matrix <laughs> that's all there is to it we're in the matrix and as we're in the matrix let's take control let's get a little remote controls take control of our vessels and make sure we live our best life virginia i hope you'll come back another day we can talk we'll start from there the um, um, the Chinese metaphysics, quantum physics, I find that fascinating. <laughs> Virginia Moose Moon, thank you for joining us. Thanks so much. Isn't that cool? So <laughs> watch this space because Virginia will return soon. That's not a threat, it's a promise. And right now we're going to a quick break and then I'll be back in just a moment. Hey, hey. All right, guys, so I'm the designated driver tonight, so I'm going to choose the Zero Hero place. So all of my soft drinks are for free. And if you want to go somewhere else, just check out the Facebook, Instagram, or the ZeroHero.es website for any of the bars, discotheques, or restaurants on there. I'm happy to go anywhere you want to go, as long as it's Zero Hero. Welcome to Lemongrass, Doña Lola. Thank you very much. Hey, hey. Last week, my CIT Marbella guest of the week was Ana Lopez of Boho Club Marbella. Boho Club is one of my favorite places. It's five star. It's exquisite. They serve food from eight in the morning until midnight every single day. It's also a little boutique hotel. Well, actually, it's growing quite a bit, so not so boutique at the moment. They are open to the public. A lot of people think they aren't. And one of the things I can highly recommend, because I went there, is the new Flamenco Thursdays. They have an Andalus patio. There was a Spanish guitarist and a couple that were dancing flamenco. And it was just a delightful evening. I can only but recommend it highly that you check out the Flamenco Thursdays at Boho Club Marbella. Here's a little snippet of my visit.
Buenas noches. Bienvenidas. Muchísimas gracias. Que disfrutéis. Gracias. Just recently, we lost our dear Jesper Sander Peterson. He was the president of the Costa Press Club, of which I'm a member, an avid supporter of his homeland, Denmark, and someone that we are going to truly, truly miss. Unfortunately, he was unwell for some time, and he didn't recover. My deepest sympathies to his family and his friends. We had a tribute to him, I've got goosebumps, at the Costa Press Club summer gala that we celebrated a few weeks ago and I thought it'd be nice just to share a snippet of the moment and a photo of Jesper and although he's no longer with us he will always be with us in our memories and in our hearts. I really miss you Jesper and I'm so honoured and delighted that I got to meet you, to know you and appreciate the love that you have for your country. It was truly inspiring, an inspiring person. My CIT Marbella guest of the week is Kensington Finest Properties. I'm going to say that properly. Kensington Finest Properties. Sounds ever so posh and I'm delighted to meet Jose de la Maza, who's heading up the whole thing in Andalusia. Jose, welcome to the programme. Thank you so much, Nicole. Very happy to be here with you today. I really, when I saw the title of your company, I just love it. <laughs> Coming from London myself to see, you know, Kensington's finest, one likes that. It gives a very, very luxurious feel to the company before you start. So congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Actually, uh, Kensington Finest Properties International is a multinational group, real estate uh, agency operating in the luxury segment. Uh, we are new to the Andalusian market. We just started our operations uh, during past year. Enhorabuena, congratulations. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, obviously, well, as we all know, real estate uh, in Costa del Sol, it's um, a very advanced market. It's a very sophisticated market. Uh, so a brand like us, which is a Swiss company, uh, Despite the interesting, the it's a Swiss name, company, clever Swiss a, company. There is an interesting and long story uh, behind the name, but uh, actually, it's a Swiss company now uh, with a strong presence in the uh, Central European markets, especially uh, Germany, Austria, Switzerland. Uh, in Spain, we are operating in the Balearic Island, Mallorca, Ibiza, and then Madrid, Barcelona, and. Uh, we just started with Andalusia. Now Andalusia. So is it like a Maga. franchise setup? Yeah, it's an international network of uh, franchises. So 
Uh, in Spain, the brand is expanding through uh, master license uh, agreements. So for us, for example, we are a, a Malagueño company, um, but we have the license to expand the brand in Andalusia. So that's an exciting project for you personally? Yeah, yeah, it's exciting. I love real estate. I've been involved in real estate for the last uh, 20 years in my career. And yeah, it's, uh, I mean, it's a lovely sector. Uh, and especially in these days that it's really doing very well. In and what a great way to expand without you having to do it all yourself in the sense you're just acquiring an established network. You can then make referrals between each other and then gives you this multinational, international company. Yeah, that was um, our idea when we started with my partner. Um, uh, we wanted to bring uh, also some international, let's say, value added to the sector because, as we said, it's very competitive. Uh, but at the same time, the brand is uh, trusting on uh, local partners, local people, myself being from, from Malaga, a city from Pedregalejo. Um, so, yeah, we have a, a very good uh, combination. And at the same time, we also benefit from being uh, part of a strong international network. So at this moment, it's obviously the very in, um, beginning stages. You're looking to make sales, as one would assume. Obviously. But also to bring other companies from around Andalusia into the fold, into the group? Yeah, exactly. That's uh, our idea. We are in the business of uh, selling uh, properties, both residential and commercial. But uh, we are also in charge of the expansion of the brand. So uh, in order to do that, we are looking for uh, potential partners, people that they have their own real estate agencies or they are entrepreneurs, they want to uh, start up a business in the real estate uh, sector with us. So that's uh, something that we are uh, pursuing. Um, yeah, it's, I think something which is differential to Kensington is that we see ourselves in the business of uh, uh, helping people, not really selling properties. Uh, in the sense that we look for opportunities to develop our people, to grow within our brand, uh, within our partners. Uh, and that's, I think, it's a differential because we put the, all the focus in, in how our people grow because uh, we grow helping our clients in their real estate needs. And at the same time, it, if people grow, the brand will grow and it's a positive dynamic. I was having actually a conversation earlier on today about the real estate industry and how it's changed over the years here in Marbella, the Costa del Sol, and undeniably years ago it was a very aggressive sell. And I think it's refreshing and encouraging that more companies take the approach of Kensington to put the emphasis on the relationship. Yeah. And if it's not a sale this week, it'll be next year, but at least making that bond and creating that connection as opposed to just trying to sell anything yes. at any cost. Absolutely, that's, uh, I think that's the point, that the real estate industry, as many others, are changing very fast, especially after COVID. Um, it's true that it has been, a, a, let's say, a traditional uh, industry, uh, not raising uh, changes uh, probably during a number of years, but it has changed a lot. It also, especially in the luxury segment, the profile of the client is changing a lot. It's a, uh, more uh, young people that it used to be, uh, more tech oriented, uh, people that uh, buy the houses to spend more time compared to what uh, they were spending before. So the profile of the client is changing. I think the operators, we need to change also and, and adapt. Um, as you said, uh, it's very important, even for international brands, uh, we need to understand that it's people that uh, builds the relationship. So I think something, a very important trend we are seeing these days is that uh, the, the agent has a very, very, very uh, important uh, role. Uh, it has always been, but now even within our brands like us, uh, it's first the agent and then the brand can help, can be an umbrella, can of course give uh, trust and everything and systems and everything. But at the end, people are gonna rely on Nicole or Jose to sell their houses, to buy, to buy their houses, because that hasn't changed, which is a house is a house, is where you put your life and it's really important. It is, at the end of the day, they're putting their trust in you. Yeah. Even if you've got that major big company behind you, the face is you, and it's a lot of responsibility when it comes to the amount of money one invests on a home or a second home. Yeah, 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 but exactly with me and, and our team, uh, our team of uh, team leaders and advisors in the different regions, they are the CEOs of, of their own business as uh, independent agents and 
uh, yeah, it's, I think it has never been a, a better moment like, like now uh, to really uh, be a professional in, in this industry. Not only because you can uh, 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 make a, a lot of money if you are doing uh, well your job, but also because of the, um, let's say, of, of the reward you can get on, on really building these relationships and, and giving uh, professional advice and feeling well doing that. Not as you said in the past, like just being very aggression, aggressive. Uh, they used to lock the people in. The people. Lock them, they were doing the, what was it, the uh, time sharing. They used to Ooh. lock people up. I mean, not even let them out until they signed. I mean, the days that we have seen on the Costa del Sol. Yes, yes, that was hardcore selling. That was hardcore. That was hardcore. really hardcore. I imagine having the parent company in, in Switzerland yes. and having these Nordic and Scandinavian countries, it gives a lot of nice leads for you as well of those people because they are in droves coming over to warmer climates. So that must be for anyone thinking of maybe joining up to <laughs> Kensington Finders Properties as an agent. I am, one would imagine that a lot of people are coming and that they're forwarding you clients as well. So that's a nice way to get started with locals and those looking to yes, invest. Yes, definitely now these days we are seeing more than 90% of our leads from foreign markets. Um, and also, well, you know, traditionally uh, the British market was, well, it's still the, the larger, but what we are seeing these days is that the market has diversified, uh, expanding uh, enormously in terms of the base of uh, countries and clients. In our case, our brand is very well recognized with uh, German speaking clients, so, and also in Central Europe overall. Um, that's where you know people are telling us, look, uh, I come from Ibiza, I come from Mallorca, I know your brand, I'm working already with them, and yeah, we have a very important part of the business which comes from these markets. Well, you must be very happy as you've gone forward with Kensington Finest Properties to get that good feedback from the other offices because it is a hashtag better together that all of you are making up the, the whole of the company and giving it that wonderful reputation. Yes, so congratulations. Yes. Thank you so much. We'll have to come back on the program in a few more months when you've got a little bit more in it and tell <laughs> us how it's going. I will be very happy to come back. But I'm sure you could be successful. That illusion, illusion that um, enthusiasm for starting off a new project. Perfect. Thank you so much. That was really lovely to meet you, Jose. Best of luck. Pues que bien, ¿no? Nuevas empresas in our city. Don't go away because we've just welcomed our CIT Marbella guest of the week. But there is a lot more to come after the break because it's all happening in Marbella. Mm. Crazy, the summer's here. Zero Hero, welcome to the Secret Garden. We welcome you. Hi guys, Kazakhstan is proud to welcome the Zero Heroes. So come on in and enjoy free soft drinks for anyone who is the designated driver. Thank you, Nicole. My name is Govinda, I'm from Everest. Uh, welcome to Zero Hero, the Everest Fusion, to uh, enjoy your cocktails, drinks, and happy hour as well. And food, of course, is delicious. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks to Marie Noel Ariz of Marie Noel Communications, I was delighted to attend the gala at the Club Med Magna Hotel for the foundation created by Cesar Scariolo. He was the 
national selections coach for the Spanish basketball team. Everybody knows him very well. I know him through the foundation. And I'm very, very proud to see that in the nearly 15 years that the foundation's been going, how it's grown, how respected it is, and how much they do for the local families and children that are unfortunately subject to cancer. Well done to everybody involved in the gala. Got goosebumps again. It was a beautiful evening and a little bit different. The entertainment was provided by Wenare and this meant beautiful classical ballet and pianist. It was a delight, so much so that I really feel that it's worth dedicating a good slice of this week's programme to share that exquisite entertainment with you because they came over to Marbella just for this and I think it was well worthy of sharing. This is quite a great turnout. You must be feeling proud of the years that you just keep going and somehow you get there and you get things done. It's quite impressive. Yeah, I'm really uh, kind of overwhelmed from uh, seeing so many friends back together after two years um, of uh, interruption because of the pandemic. We could, uh, uh, you know, restart this tradition of, uh, I would say, a, a dinner between friends more than a formal gala, but I'm really, really um, thankful for all these people who are supporting the foundation, who are really helping us in uh, developing our, our um, job, helping people, kids and families with uh, different kind of cancers in the south of Spain. Your foundation has really blossomed since the first year. It's amazing. It's such a consolidated, well-known, respected cause. 
what would you like to just give the viewers a message how we can help from home? Well, uh, it's true. I mean, this we are getting into our 15th year of activity and it's true we, we grew we we um as you said consolidated ourselves into a foundation which is which has credibility transparency we are small we are we respect and admire big foundation which are supporting the the research uh, science uh, oriented foundation but we are a social oriented foundation we help um, directly, kids, families, with uh, you know personal support, uh, economical support, social support, psychological support. And what we wanted is to try to make to make it a little bit easier for for these people of our of our um, hurt. We can say right here the Malaga Malaga uh, land, uh, the south of Spain. To go through to this really difficult moments, the therapies, how tough they are, with a, a little, a little bit more of a of a smile in their faces. Well, you put a lot of smiles on a lot of faces tonight, Definitely. and I wish you congratulations and many more years of success in helping others. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot.
if you've never been to the restaurant Tomodachi in Nueva Andalucía, then you're like me because I've never been there either. But it is their second anniversary and they're doing a little celebration to commemorate that amazing achievement. Anything that lives past 18 months in Marbella for me is doing exceedingly well. But as you've never been and I've never been, let's go together and find out just what it's like. Panti, first of all, thank you for the invitation. No, you're welcome. Thank and you congratulations. Thank you so much. To survive so much. two years in Marbella is a very good sign. Exactly, exactly. I've seen some restaurants that open same time as uh, we did, and uh, you know they're closed now. So you know, I'm lucky to be surviving. Let's I'm say. sure <laughs> it's more than luck. You're a very qualified and prepared young man. Thank You've you. had a fascinating history with Nobu, traveling the world, and you've now come back to bring Japanese Peruvian fusion to your own place. Yes, exactly. Well, uh, you know, working for Nobu, you know, uh, for many years, and you know, also uh, going around uh, to Saudi, Singapore, uh, where not, you know, like it gave me, uh, gave me uh, confidence also, like, you know, I always wanted to open my own place, and you know, Nobu gave me the foundation, and, you know, here I am, uh, you know, trying to, you know, put a stamp on Marbella of Tomodachi. And, uh, you know, I'm uh, struggling and here I am surviving, let's say, not struggling, surviving. Surviving. More than surviving. We're going to all join in to ensure that this continues to be successful. What does Tomodachi mean? So Tomodachi basically means uh, friends in Japanese. So we want this place to be like, you know, when you come to your friend's house, you know, all your worries are outside this door and you enter your friendly zone you know so you know you are comfortable that's why when we work we were wearing casual clothes and stuff so we're not you know people are not intimidated with a suit jacket and stuff so you know uh, it's a fr friendly environment and say. your price range is uh... well my price range is uh, reasonable you know obviously you know looking at uh, working at Nobu and you know of course you can't compare with Nobu because that's the brand itself so uh, you know we have a good quality products, you know, like uh, with a high standard, you know, everything is fresh, uh, you know, top quality with a great price uh, for the area. So. I'm very, very, very proud of you. Very happy for you. And I wish you many years of success to come. Thank you so much. Looking forward to trying and then coming for dinner. Sure. I didn't realize you were here. I'm glad exactly. I got the invitation and now exactly. I know what's here. Yeah, yeah. well, we, in the beginning, we didn't want this place to, you know, we didn't want to do a lot of promotion. So we want this place to be like a hidden gem where people discover this place. So uh, here we are. So uh, not doing promotion was a, a mistake from my part because nowadays, you know, everybody's on phone, on their phone and social media. So. You know, I just wanted to reach out to uh, many people as possible so that they could, you know, come to our second year anniversary, try the food and then, uh, uh, you know, know the place, basically. I think you did the right thing. You got it all right. And now it's right. You can tell everyone to come. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank and you thank so you much. Let's coming. let the guests come in now. All right, perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for 
coming. Thank you for the invite. It's so delicious. Thank you. Thank you. Definitely going to recommend it to the guys. Yeah. Good to have you. Where are you from, Sorry? Where are you from? Uh, or you, uh, well, I'm from Nepal. Are oh, you? Yeah. 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 Well, that's it for another week. Thank you so much for joining me and my guests, accompanying me to the beautiful happenings that are going on in our glorious city. If you'd like to be part of the show, drop me a line. I'd love to hear from you. And if it's suitable, of course, I'll bring you on the programme. No charge. So drop me a line and let me know. I'd also be very grateful if you would follow our ZeroHero.es website, where we offer free soft drinks to the designated drivers. Great bars, restaurants, hotels, even the casino in Marbella offering that free soft drink to designated drivers to create a little bit more road traffic safety awareness in our party city. Also check out my column, Marbella Moments in the Euro Weekly News. Links to everything in my website, nicoleking.es. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for sharing my guest messages. Thank you for taking care of yourselves, looking after each other and joining me again next week for more of what's going on behind the scenes in Marbella right now. <laughs>